G'day, welcome back to the channel. My name's Matt, but you'll know me as WFX Malice. Today, I'm gonna to be showing you how to set up port forwarding for game and game servers on the older 600 series D-Link wireless routers. Let's get started. So recently I've seen a lot of troll tutorials getting out there telling people to set up port forwarding by opening up DMZ on their router. DMZ stands for Demilitarized Zone. It tells your router that there is no possible chance or no imminent threat of an attack from the internet through your computer and to allow all forms of traffic through all ports directly through your games rig. It's not a good thing. That leaves your software firewall as your only line of defense against an attack. Yep. You always want your router to be your first line of defense. That should mitigate most attacks and only allow things through ports that you've opened to your computer so then your software firewall can then go and manage those few attacks that might potentially slip through the cracks. Now I know what you're thinking, ah, it's all good, I use the Windows uh, firewall. Microsoft aren't good at stopping attacks or threats. Um, I'm just gonna put this in perspective. I'm just gonna point out that the Bill Gates Foundation is a major sponsor of the Wuhan Research Laboratory. I'll just let that sink in for a second. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna show you how to set up port forwarding correctly on your router to only allow ports to be opened for particular traffic, so particular games or game servers. So the first thing you wanna do is you're gonna to wanna to log on to your router's management portal. Now this is gonna be a default gateway essentially. If you're not sure what that is, go to command prompt and type in IP config, you'll see default gateway. I guarantee it's gonna be something like 10.0.0.1 or 192.168.0.1 or 192.168.1.1, unless you've changed it, it's gonna be one of those three addresses by default. And username and password is usually something along the lines of admin, admin, or admin password. Look on the bottom of your router or look on the little card that came with your router, it's gonna tell you that information. Once you're in your router, follow these steps. Click manual setup, and then advanced in the top menu. Notice that there is a difference between firmware version 1.0 and 1.11. If you're still using 1.0, click port forwarding in the left-hand menu and take note that there's additional line spacing on the port ranges. That's the only difference. For this example, we're gonna be hosting a Minecraft server on one of our virtual machines. So let's create a rule. Let's give it a name. It doesn't matter what the name is. Use the standard port of 25565 for Minecraft and select TCP as your traffic type. Notice with this router that the public port is your external or WAN and the private is your internal or LAN. Point it to the IP address of where you're hosting a virtual machine, 10.0.10.10 in this example. What about if you want to host another server, say a Feed the Beast on another virtual machine? Well, that's fine. We just need to make sure that the public port is 25567 and the internal is 25565. You need to make sure your friends are connecting to 25567 for that to work. What about if you're going to host them both on the same virtual machine? Well, that's fine. All we need to do is put the port range from 25565 to 25567, both internal and external. Make sure for that example, you go into your Minecraft server properties and change the address to 25567 on the relative server. Now we're going to create a rule for GTA Online. There's been a lot of problems recently with people connecting to servers, getting extended delays and connecting because of a NAT strict type rule. So for this, we need to create two rules. We need to make sure we select UDP for the traffic type and we need to point the IP address to our gaming rig, not our virtual machines. So the first rule, we need to make sure we have 6672 as the internal and external port. And for the second rule, we have 61455 to 61458. Make sure you select UDP and that should give you no problems in connecting to a server from now on. And that's as simple and as difficult as it gets. If your route is different to the one I've shown in this video, check out my channel, because I may have covered it in one of my other videos. If not, Leave me a comment down below with the brand name and the model and I'll see if I can find an emulator and get you a tutorial up ASAP. Well, thanks for watching guys. Be sure to hit that like and subscribe button and we'll see you in the next video.